It's time for This Is Life Moments with Rob McGowan. How we live always changes the world around us. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here What's going on? Y'all excited for uh, Christmas? Y'all ready? I, I'm telling people I'm on track. <laughs> on track? <laughs> Which means I'm not totally ready, but I've started and I feel like I will be ready by the 24th. <laughs> That's usually when I start to get ready. Yes. Okay. Well, then I'm ahead of you. <laughs> I like to go to the drugstore the night before and really put the pressure on. <laughs> yes. See what shoppers have such a wonderful variety. I know. Right? You never know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's usually there's got to be something in here for somebody. Something <laughs> really narrows everyone. down my my choices. <laughs> uh, oh, that's good. I I yeah. Maybe this weekend I'll try to finish up. <laughs> And I ask everybody, what do they want? And everybody always says the same thing. Oh, I don't need anything. So nobody ever gives you any help. It's like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, and prob- I mean, I, it's less about obviously the presence as, as it is, it, you know, getting to spend time with people. And uh, I like, I mean, we like to exchange, but I, I, I tell people I like a thoughtful gift more than something of a particular price value. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a big one on books. I love books. Something that's got uh you know, can tell some story that that might get across that we could talk about or something. It's kind of interesting. Well, I'm I'm really kind of nerdy that way too. Like, so this time of year, like I'll be going, I'm searching the internet and magazines and I'm looking for, you know, the best books of the year, best TV shows of the year, best movies. And so I'm, I've got a list in my book actually of all the books I want to read that I read at, you know, and hope, and I've spread that around hoping I might get a few under the tree, you know? That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with books. I always love books. Uh, yeah, so my I think some of my favorite presents last year my my daughter got me uh, uh, the Twelve Rules of Life by Jordan Peterson and it was an amazing book. I was like I when I first started reading I thought this I'm not gonna like this but uh, once you get through it it was a great book. So there's all kinds of good stuff out there just change your motivation stuff that's for sure yeah well i got one uh, earlier this year I, t- I think it's something like uh 21 lessons for the 21st century oh and, yeah uh, and it you know it's sort of like that thought provoking uh non-fiction although recently i'm into fiction as well i so i like to balance something like a little bit more like life uh advice or thoughtfulness and then you know i always like now to have a novel on the go too that's maybe just a bit more uh fun yeah, I'm gonna have to do that because uh, I got too much serious stuff. I mean, I'm reading Nietzsche and all this crazy <laughs> Carl Jung, and I'm like, my mind is starting to get overwhelmed with all this balance. Stuff. You know, a little bit. <laughs> I need a little, just a, I don't know, <laughs> something different. Well, it's always at any time I've got too much of one, I then I I start to look for the other. So it's you know, I guess I, like I said, it's about balance, especially for me around the holidays, trying to balance getting a little bit of time off and downtime and resting up. And I'm also, I'm sure you're probably the same, Rob, you know, I, I do love sort of that embracing the, the end of the year and looking at, so I'll, I'll usually journal sort of my thoughts on the year and then my sort of hopes and aspirations for uh, the new year as well. So I use it as a, as a time to reflect and, and reset. That's, that's good. Yeah. We all should look back on what we've done or, what we started out to do and did we come close to it or did we change our minds and, and reflect on that? It's a great, great way to live your life every day. Actually, I ref- every day I try to reflect on what I'm going to do today and make it a better day than it was yesterday. So it's a good way to start the day. So and what's, what's your favorite Christmas song of all time of all the brings back the most memories you hear it and think, Oh, I really like that one. doesn't matter. I never get tired of it. Okay, well, you know, I can't pick just one. <laughs> uh, we love we love the Christmas music, and you know, it's all it's always about mood too, Rob. So, like, you know, I've got uh, different categories of favorites. So, oh, really, you know, well, well, you know, in terms of the sort of the the more fun, you know, mm-hmm. uh, secular commercial type of, you know, I, I you know that's fun in a certain moment. Like, you know, when I was working at the brewery, for example, so songs uh, I, I like uh, driving home for Christmas. Chris Ray Reese, uh, there's a Christmas, um, uh, the, the, uh, Darlene Love uh, has a beautiful song. 
Um, you know, uh, of course, uh, Kelly Clarkson in recent years is underneath the tree. Um, but, you know, on, in terms of sort of uh, like a Christmas Eve vibe or, you know, something every morning I have a, a, a a CD actually, a CD, still have a CD um, from when I was a kid. It's um, the, the youth choir from St. Michael's uh, school, private school up in Toronto, uh, their boys choir, at, like singing many traditional Christmas songs. And, uh, and I kind of love to get up at Christmas morning before everybody else with a coffee, put on my Christmas choir music. So things like, do you hear what I hear? And I saw three ships come sailing in and, and, uh, you know, some of the more traditional songs and, and, and in that vein too, my mom's, uh, my mom, who's no longer with us, uh, she passed in 2014. It's the reason I came home, but her favorite was always, um, Oh, Holy Night. And so I think that always has a special place in the heart for me and my brother and sister, uh, you know, because it really reminds us and connects us with that, uh, with mom and, and kind of brings her with us uh, over the holidays as well. That's awesome. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. Actually. Oh, holy night. I love that song. So what is, so going on that vein. So what's a favorite memory with your mom at Christmas, something that you guys might've done or, or one year, one particular thing that you think back on and go, wow, that was, that was really something special. Well, you know, it's, it, it's hard. I, I remember, I remember in a general sense, like baking, baking uh, sugar cookies with my mom was something we always did. And I, I, you know, now try to still do that. Me and my sister have a baking day. And, and I mean, many people do, of course, in Miramichi. Uh, and, you know, I've got my, my nephew coming home, I'm going to see if he'll want to bake sugar cookies with us as well. But, you know, it, it's sort of the routine too. like, it, it, not just one year, but over years, you know, like getting out and going to Christmas Eve mass, for example. And I, and, you know, sort of a tongue in cheek is every year, if you could figure out how to be on time, but every year it was yelling at somebody to hurry up and get in the car. Right. And, and come down and, uh, and do that. We would always get together with my, my mom's brother and, and her big family Christmas Eve. And then another big get together on my dad's side on Christmas day, um, and so just, just all of, but the in-betweens, I think too, I remember like at mom's place, um, maybe people don't do this as much anymore, certainly not in COVID, but in general. And, and like, we would just have people dropping in like, so, you know, I'd come home from university or even as a younger kid and over that week or two of Christmas, you just never knew who was going to stop by like family that was back home in town. And, and, you know, I just sort of love that, 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 that spirit of a family over Christmas of getting to see people you don't see all the time and everybody's in a great mood and there's lots of delicious things to eat. So, uh, you know, just, uh, I, I guess I couldn't necessarily say, oh, there's this one moment, but it's just this collective collage of memories over time and, and sort of knowing that your favorite moments are going to keep happening year after year. Did you ever have a catastrophe, you know, the cat knocked down the Christmas tree or <laughs> something uh, happened? Somebody burnt the turkey the day of Christmas, some some strange thing that stands out? <laughs> well, I will. I've always I tease my mom when she was with us. So, I'm, you know, I, I she was, you know, cooking wasn't her forte. So uh, burnt turkey was what I would call the norm. <laughs> I didn't realize that it could be moist and delicious until I was moved away and living with roommates. And thought, oh, my God, what is this? Uh, but, you know, I mean, we've all had those sort of moments. I know and, and when my treat, when I was living at mom's place for a year after she passed and we had the, a, a tree um, and that fell over a couple of times, unfortunately, and, and broke many of her ornaments that we all were cherishing. So that, that wasn't a cat, but it was just a poor engineering, I guess, on our behalf. <laughs> Yeah, I had a few of those where you put the stand in quite, not quite, a little bit lazy the night before from the stand up. Yeah. Well, and this this year we've got a real tree here at my house, and it's the first time um, in many years because I was damaged, I was scarred by my inability <laughs> to put up a Christmas tree and, and leave it up. So uh, this year we, you know, we have a new stand. Uh, we've got it reinforced to the wall, so I'm very confident it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. So have you been out to any events this year that for Christmas or that, that you found were really good or something that stood out to you? 
It's, you know, this, I know that there's lots going on. We talked about that uh, a couple of weeks ago when we were connecting, but I haven't myself had much of a chance because I've been working quite a bit in my personal work too on, on a documentary project on a lot of weekends. So, you know, I really wanted to get to uh, Susan Butler's, uh, you know, uh, her Christmas concert, mm -hmm. uh, Christmas to Remember that she does every year and in, in honor of Mayor, former Mayor Cormier too. Um, and you know, I missed the, the drive through parade because again, I was out of town. So I'm hopeful though, that I'll be able to sneak a couple of things. And I, I know that uh, this weekend, um, I, I, I'm not sure if it'll still be on. I hope it will be, but uh, Sistema, the, uh, the mm -hmm. young orchestra group in, in town, uh, is having a Christmas concert Saturday at Care for Bosele at 11. Yeah. That's so amazing. I'm those kids and the instruments, my niece is in that. That's just a, it's an incredible thing to listen to them play. So I'm hoping to get to that, you know, uh, and that will help. Uh, and my, I guess I said, my baking day with my sister set for this weekend. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, so we'll start to, we, the tree's been up. We last year, we, you know, we, we followed that trend of getting the tree up a bit earlier. Everybody was doing that to sort of help with, you know, mental health around COVID. And this year we decided to keep going with it. So, uh, you know, I used to kind of be the kind of person who only put it up a week or so before, but now I'm, uh, you know, December one, get that tree up kind of guy. And, and that just having the house decorated, I've got my point set as all around to you. I, I do like to decorate and, and sort of have that festive vibe. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of the fun of it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so the, the decorations are up and the, the treats are going to come next. <laughs> I guess stay away from those. <laughs> Moderation. So the, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's hard at Christmas, isn't it? <laughs> For sure. Such good food. So one time a year, you just want to just go to town. I don't know. Something about it. It's true. <laughs> you can't help it. Now, do you have a, is there a favorite poem over the years or anything that you, that stands out that you remember or things things that are special to you at Christmas? You know, it's interesting. Uh, you met, I, when you mentioned when we were chatting and uh, you mentioned poem and I thought, Oh my God, I'm, 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 I'm what am I going to say about this? Because I, I don't think uh, of myself as a, you know, a poem person. I don't, I don't read a lot of poetry, although maybe mm -hmm. I should in the spirit of diversifying my <laughs> reading list as we were chatting about earlier. I mean, every year we, we would always, um, read them, of course, the night before Christmas, uh, on Christmas Eve. And, and uh, we even, you know, even in later years, it was still fun to do as, as grownups and, or with my nephew or, you know, and younger ones now, but I mean, that, so I think that's, that's considered a poem. Um, yeah. So maybe I'll go with the night before Christmas. And, uh, you know, we just um, in a general sense, uh, that one, that one's always been, you know, kind of fun and, and traditional at the same time. Awesome. Yeah. That's one of my favorites, actually. I like, love that poem. I actually have it on my screen. It's funny because I have a kid show tonight at every Tuesday night. We do the show about bullying and uh, just getting kids to understand that they're, they can make the difference in their community. We had talked about this uh, a couple of weeks ago or last week, I think about uh, starting a program in the school and, and getting kids to talk about how they dream and, and what they dream of a great city being like. And then, uh, you know, bringing council down and talking to them about how we can make it come to fruition. I think it's a great idea. So we all need to start dreaming in a better way, in a, in a way to make a, a place where we all can live in, in great peace and harmony, for sure. Well, and I mean, it's great to in, engage uh, the young, the young folks, right? Like they have lots of great ideas. They, the, you know, the, uh, they're the future, but they're usually quite good at understanding where we need to go and articulating that when, you know, some of us older folks seem to take longer to change. They don't something. have all the, the stuff that's weighing that's us, right. making us uh, be negative. <laughs> that's right. So it's always good for us to stay grounded in what they have to say. That's for sure. I can't remember what that, uh, that famous poem by Shakespeare is or from Macbeth or whatever, where he's talking about all the world's a stage and we are all playing parts, but then he ends it. The best way he ends it is, uh, it's the tale told by an idiot. <laughs> I think it's, it's so great. We're all that way. We all have this big thing. And then really, what do we know at the end? We're Talk all just trying to help. grounded, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so that's great. So what's another, what's another song that you like? Gee. I'm setting you up, you know, this, as I play this interview on the radio afterwards, the songs will play. <laughs> oh, the songs will play. I will. Yeah. I, I just, you know what? I, I, I've always loved uh, I, one of my favorite classic uh, Christmas albums, Kenny and Dolly. 
Oh, uh, yeah. So I, I, you know, Christmas to remember or something. I think it's called. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Ho- and I'll be home with bells on is always, always puts me in a good mood. Uh, that's oh, yeah. probably my favorite track from, from the album. Oh, I remember um, those specials. Remember those days you used to sit around the TV with your parents or your grandparents or whoever, and they, the Dolly and Kenny specials would come on and, Oh, the, the old school yeah. variety shows. Oh, I love it. You know, because as you know, Rob, I, my career is in as a television director and producer, and I'm a I'm a pop culture nerd and junkie. And, and I mean, all of these things like I mean, that's part of, of what we love about Christmas, right, is all the nostalgia. So the the Grinch, uh, the classic Grinch cartoon, the Charlie Brown Christmas um, you know, even old Christmas episodes of some of your favorite, like, like we would watch Christmas episodes from friends or mm-hmm. when we were kids, we would love the home improvement Christmas episodes or, you know, so there's, it, it's, the, and now with the, of course, with the internet and all the streaming services, all this stuff is out there. So you can basically find anything you've ever seen and, and, and watch it all over again. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fun to watch your grandkids see stuff for the first time or, or get their perspective on things Carrying on that right like one of our favorite uh my probably my favorite christmas movie is the the two original home alones uh oh and, yeah classic uh, and now having uh my my with my nephew and with my some of my friends kids that are you know in five six seven years old and and seeing them see that it, it's like as it's as much fun or more fun watching the, the kids and their wide eyes on the whole thing as it is uh watching the movie itself yeah and I still get a good laugh out of it every year. <laughs> it doesn't matter oh, how many times I, it I mean, it's, it's, it's essential viewing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's one of those. Uh, you, it'll make you smile. Anything that can make you smile is a good thing. We need more of that. Well, that's it. And I mean, I time day, time goes so quickly. Days go so quickly. Like it's, uh, you know, it, it, it is sort of like I appreciate, again, the opportunity to sort of reflect, but also the opportunity to just slow down and have a few days where, you don't feel like you've got to be doing this or you have to be over there. Like, uh, you know, and, and not, you know, we all, everybody's so busy, but it, 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 you just, sometimes you need to have these moments that force you to slow down or, or maybe you are not going to be as good at doing that as you should be. Yeah. I was, I was writing yesterday, something about that. Cause I had, I had left work and, and, you know, I was at work all day doing this idea of, you know, how we talk and communicate to each other. I'm really working on trying to figure out a way we can talk, so that we, uh, we, we lift each other up all the time because we're always, we always go into this default mode. So first thing, you know, you leave work, you're in a good mood. The day went great. And you think, oh, I'm going to go home and have my glass of wine or my, whatever it is that makes you feel good. Go home, have a bath, read my book, whatever. Are you I'm, watching me, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> whatever yeah. it might be that makes your, the end of your day great, right? You're, you're looking forward to it. And then you get out and first thing you know, you're in traffic and you're like, oh, how did I end up? It's the, that time of day in traffic. And the guy in front of you is looking at his cell phone and misses the light. And the Tim Hortons lineup's going around the block and you're not getting through. Then you get to the grocery store because you realize, oh, I haven't picked up anything, whatever it is for the week that I need to get. And you get this big, huge lineup and people are complaining and some lady's yelling at her kid. And you're thinking, why? Why do I got to go through this baloney and all this? Gar-? And first thing you do is start feeling like, this, this isn't right. Why do I, why are these people irritating my day? <laughs> Cause we all create our own world. Right. We and it's what you, and, and you know, we know that that's us, right? Yes, like it's yeah. all us and how we, we see things and respond to them. So yeah, you're if right. We thought, I mean, if we just thought about it differently. Right. You know, and if we just, yeah. And you know, and it, Hey, I mean, we, we have good days and bad, but if we could figure out how to not to let that stuff affect us. Right. Well, even more than that, I was thinking about how do we, when we get into that situation, think in a way that changes the world you know what i mean maybe that guy on the cell phone he just found out some bad information about his mom and he's upset maybe maybe none of these things are true but if we start thinking about people in a different aspect and create a new reality we start uh thinking okay well maybe i should be nicer and maybe i should cheer somebody up in line and maybe i should do and all of a sudden the experience becomes a whole different experience and if we can get our minds and and prepared and start thinking about doing things in a better way and in a way that enlightens people in ourselves what a what a different world we would live in well and but as you mentioned it's all internal right so mm-hmm. it, it's how do you perceive and react to this so you know what these kind of things um may you know at, at times of course i'm it's pretty good i'm pretty good about these things i think like you know it's 
it, it just, you know, I can't control what's going on around me. So I'm going to just accept that and live in it and, uh, and try not to let it get you down. Right. And sometimes it's easier said than done, but uh, oh, for sure, we all errands fall. are errands, you know, <laughs> we've uh, part of life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they, they don't teach you that stuff in school. Eh? The mundane part of life, everyday irritations that you're going to go through, how are you going to handle them? <laughs> Maybe that should be yeah, a class. how to cope, right? Yeah. You know, it's not all fun. <laughs> Most days are like a struggle to get through. So how do you handle the, the average day for everybody? So, yeah. No, that's that's for sure. And uh, Christmas is the one time we actually think about stuff and, and do things. And I was upset the other day. I was, I you know, I, nobody carries cash anymore. I just don't carry cash in my wallet. I always have a bank card or whatever. I'm the same. Uh, yeah. You know, and you see these Santa Claus guys and people who are volunteering their time and they're they're there with the Salvation Army bucket and stuff. And how many times I walk by there and think, oh, why didn't I put some money in my wallet? And always upset about that. <laughs> well, I get anxiety about these things because like I, I actually got the first time I saw them, the first couple of times I saw them at the grocery store, I got cash out and donated, but that was like a month ago now. And I feel guilty every time I walk by because I've made my donation, but this person doesn't know that. <laughs> so I don't know and why. It, and it's I not even just about, about the it. donation, right? It, like I, I broke it down. I thought, well, I, I put some $5 bills in my wallet. So, cause every time I want to go by there, it's to talk with that volunteer who's taken their time to change the world and make it a better place. So to me, it's not even about the money anymore. It's about engaging that person who's doing something special for my community. And I, I that's the way I look at it now. Well, thank you your, to your point. A thank you goes a long way too. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Even if I don't have cash, I always stop to talk to them and, and ask them what they're doing and how they got and volunteered and stuff. I think it's great. Absolutely. Well, and I mean, it takes, it, it, I think that's part of, of, of uh, the spirit of the season as well, you know, is it, is it, it when we can, and if we have time in, in, in whatever way works for us to sort of take a moment to give back, you know, and uh, you know, that's a big part of, of holiday memories over the years too, like food drives when I was in school, like, you know, leading food drives and, and, uh, and helping out, I used to gift wrap uh, at the mall for charity when I was in university. Um, so some of my friends always say, how do you know how to wrap presents so good? And I say, I was trained. Uh, you know, and in recent years, um, again, with the exception of, of last year with COVID, but uh, every year, the Friday before Christmas, um, the Anglican Parish in uh, Newcastle, um, well, every Friday they host uh, a, like a soup kitchen, a, a meal. And, and the Friday before Christmas, it's always a, a, a turkey Christmas dinner. And so for the four or five years, uh, again, before COVID, I always go there and it's always to help serve the meal. And, uh, and it's just such a, to me, that's like the kickoff of my Christmas and, and to, to give back and help out and, in, and use that as, as, you know, an act of service to kick off Christmas is always just made me feel so good. I almost feel like it's for me, you know? Oh, it is for sure. When we do stuff, it's a, it's like a, a guy, I was listening to a guy the other day talk about, uh, he was, he was working with some homeless people and he was saying, you know, it's all a transaction. Even, even being homeless, it's a transaction. You gotta, you put a sign up says, uh, you know, help a veteran, help me. I have 12 kids, help me. And the person going by that, uh, you know, gives you the money or doesn't give you the money. It's a transaction. They want to feel good. They, they give you a few dollars or whatever. And he says, and you know, you have the choice, you go by, you don't give money, you got two things can happen. You don't feel anything or you feel bad that you didn't give money. But when you give that money, you're paying for this transaction. So he said to this person, try something different. And he wrote, which was a great experiment. I, it was strange, but he said on the sign, and he, the way he got him to write it out was that, I know you help a lot of people and you can't help everybody, but I'm here all the time. And, and if the next time you're through or in a month from now or sometime you're able to help me, I'm, I'm grateful for all the people you do help. And that person made five times what they ever made that day because he made it, the person asking for the help had made it about the person giving rather than about themselves. Yeah. And when we learn to do that, learn that it's it, take the selfishness out of everything we do at every level we're at and, and think about the person that we're relating to or trying to, to work with, our life becomes better. So I, I thought it was a great experiment and it was just amazing how, how, how much difference it made by changing the language. Well, interesting. Uh, uh, my my mind goes to the fact that that you, you know the the homeless person did exactly what you're mentioning, but sadly, what yielded the better returns was 
appealing to the selfish self of those who were giving. Yes. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> Deep down, isn't that what it really comes down to? We're all trying to feel something good about life and do a good life and live a good life. So, I, so we got to find a way to uh, get the best out of each of us. That's right. You know, I, I, that's all, all we can really do. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, is there anything you, uh, let, how about a mayor's message for Christmas for the, for the whole city and, and for everybody? Very good. Well, I mean, Rob, it's always great to, to chat with you. And I, I do love these um, holiday chats as we get close to Christmas. And again, having that time to sort of slow down a bit, have some fun, have a nice conversation with you, just like we're all going to be doing, you know, with family and friends over the next few weeks. And, and certainly, uh, you know, I, I do want to wish everybody out there a very Merry Christmas uh, and the very best, as we would say, for, for the new year. And, and, you know, I do hope everybody has a chance. It's, you know, it's, as we talk about, you know, life in general, sometimes it's always got its ups and downs. And these last uh, couple of years have, have been extra difficult for everybody. So, you know, I hope everybody has a chance to, to recharge and relax and spend time with loved ones and, and fill the cup, so to speak. So uh, Merry Christmas to, to one and all. And, uh, and, uh, and I know we'll see everybody again and uh, with a happy and healthy new year for all of us, all of our families, and of course, for our wonderful city. Well, we want to thank Mayor Adam Lorden for uh, another great year and, and, volu- and helping out our city and putting, stepping forward to make a difference and uh, for just always being there when we call you and ask you know, what's going on in the city, you're always willing to step up and talk and let us know what's going on. So we thank you for that. Well, we'll keep it going in 2022, Rob, and all the best to you and yours as well. And you have a great Christmas and a great holiday, and and I hope it's filled with lots of love and family. Likewise. (laughs) God bless. See you later, Adam. See ya. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time